Some of the most infamous individuals on the planet have found their wealth and power in the world of illicit drugs. These are the biggest drug lords and cartel leaders amassing unimaginable fortunes by fueling the addictions of millions across the globe. They ensured the continuation of this destructive trade, all the while enjoying a life of opulence in their multi-million dollar mansions. Join us as we step inside the residences of these formidable cartel leaders and witness the extravagant homes and escape properties that were funded by the proceeds of the drug trade. Pablo Escobar, also known as Pablo Emilio Escobar Gaviria, emerged as a Colombian drug lord who achieved unprecedented notoriety and influence. Born on December 1, 1949 in Rio Negro, Colombia, Escobar's journey from a modest background to becoming the head of the infamous Medellin cartel is a story marked by ambition, ruthlessness and audacity, particularly during the tumultuous decades of the 1970s and 1980s. He presided over an extensive empire that held sway over the global cocaine trade, accumulating immense riches and wielding substantial influence. Pablo Escobar's name became synonymous with violence, corruption, and the darker aspects of the drug industry. He is remembered for orchestrating a wave of brutality and terror in Colombia, leaving a path of devastation in his wake. However, he also cultivated a reputation as a charismatic figure, often portraying himself as a modern-day Robin Hood, championing the cause of the impoverished and investing in social initiatives to garner public support. Escobar's life and criminal exploits have been extensively documented in numerous books, documentaries and movies, solidifying his status as an enduring symbol of the sinister underbelly of the drug trade. In a remarkably short span, he managed to amass staggering wealth, known for his extravagant lifestyle that included multiple grand mansions in various locations. Among his most renowned residences was Hacienda Napolis, nestled in Puerto Triunfo, Colombia. Hacienda Napolis sprawled over approximately 7,500 acres of lush Colombian countryside, situated in the Magdalena Medio region, about 150 miles northwest of Bogota. The estate boasted a diverse landscape, featuring rolling hills, dense forests, and several bodies of water. At the heart of the estate stood the opulent main mansion, serving as the residence for Escobar and his family. The interior was adorned with lavish furnishings, exquisite artwork, and comfortable living spaces reflecting the grandeur of Escobar's lifestyle. One of the most iconic aspects of Hacienda Napolis was Pablo Escobar's private zoo, which boasted an extensive collection of exotic animals. Escobar went to great lengths to import animals from various corners of the world, including elephants, giraffes, hippos, and various species of big cats. Besides the remarkable zoo, the estate featured several swimming pools, including an Olympic-sized one. Additionally, Hacienda Napolis had its very own private water park, complete with slides and other attractions. Facilitating his illicit drug operations, Escobar also maintained a private landing strip on the estate, allowing for the rapid transport of drugs to various destinations. Rumors circulated that Hacienda Napoles harbored concealed compartments and tunnels, which served as hiding spots for narcotics and offered a means to evade law enforcement during raids. Following Escobar's demise in 1993 and the dismantling of his drug empire, Hacienda Napolis fell into neglect and abandonment. However, in the late 2000s, the Colombian government transformed it into a theme park, welcoming visitors to explore the estate and catch glimpses of the remnants of Escobar's extravagant lifestyle, including the remnants of the zoo and some of the buildings. Pablo Escobar's Miami property was an extravagant mansion situated in Miami Beach, Florida. It stood as one of the drug lord's most renowned and opulent holdings during his peak in the 1980s. Nestled in the upscale Miami Beach neighborhood, this mansion offered breathtaking views of the Atlantic Ocean and convenient access to the vibrant Miami nightlife and entertainment scene. A mere year after securing Hacienda Napolis, Pablo Escobar made another significant acquisition, a luxurious pastel pink mansion in Miami spanning an impressive 7,336 square feet, all at the price of $765,500. This eye-catching villa, boasting four bedrooms and six bathrooms, is widely believed to have primarily functioned as a secure cocaine drop point 
and safe house for Escobar's trusted associates and henchmen. The interior of the pink mansion radiated opulence and extravagance. Inside, the mansion featured multiple lavish living rooms adorned with elegant furnishings, priceless artwork, and plush carpets. High ceilings and expansive windows added to the overall grandeur, allowing abundant natural light to fill the rooms. The property was a haven of amenities and entertainment options, boasting a sizable swimming pool surrounded by lush gardens and palm trees. Additionally, a rooftop terrace offered panoramic vistas of Miami Beach and the ocean. In 1990, the Miami mansion, once owned by Pablo Escobar, found a new proprietor in local oil magnate Roger, who paid $915,000 to acquire the property. Over the years, the mansion changed hands once more, and in 2014, it was purchased by Christian de Berdois, the owner of the Chicken Kitchen restaurant chain, for a substantial sum of just under $9.7 million. Upon learning of the mansion's dark past and its ties to the notorious drug lord Pablo Escobar, Christian de Berdois decided to obliterate the property, erasing any associations with its grim history of drug trafficking. Prior to commencing with the demolition, an exhaustive search of the premises was conducted in an attempt to uncover any hidden remnants or secrets connected to Escobar's previous activities. However, the search yielded no hidden treasures, except for a safe that ultimately revealed nothing of significance. Following the unsuccessful search, de Berdoir initially entertained the idea of constructing a modern residence on the land. Yet a change of plans led him to reconsider building on the property. Instead, in 2020, he chose to sell it, and the property found a new owner who acquired it for just under $11 million. The property's notoriety and its link to Pablo Escobar have contributed to its enduring legacy as one of the most iconic and enigmatic landmarks in Miami Beach. However, Escobar's real estate holdings do not end here. Pablo Escobar's La Manuela Retreat, also known as Hacienda Napolis II, was a luxurious and secluded property situated near Guatape, Antioquia, Colombia. This retreat served as one of the drug lord's private sanctuaries, offering him a refuge from the pressures of his criminal empire and the outside world. Faced with mounting law enforcement scrutiny, Pablo Escobar strategically acquired this property in 1984. In a gesture of celebration for the birth of his daughter Manuela, Pablo Escobar acquired a breathtaking and secluded holiday home. He named this sprawling 20-acre estate La Manuela in her honor. Rumors circulated that the property had double-layered walls, a feature that allowed Escobar to discreetly store large quantities of cocaine and cash in hidden compartments in keeping with the practices of a notorious drug lord. True to his status, the estate was adorned with extravagant amenities. Among its notable features was a captivating swimming pool, offering a tranquil oasis amidst the lush surroundings. The property also boasted a private nightclub, providing an exclusive escape for Escobar and his inner circle. Extensive grounds included a guest house for accommodating VIP visitors, a seaplane dock for discreet travel, and recreational facilities such as tennis courts and a football field, which conveniently served as a heliport. However, in 1993, a mere eight months before Pablo Escobar's eventual demise, this cherished holiday home faced a devastating attack. A meticulously planted bomb, orchestrated by the vigilante death squad known as Los Pepes, tore through the property. This audacious assassination plot aimed to eliminate the powerful cartel boss once and for all. Nevertheless, Escobar received a warning about the impending danger, allowing him to flee the premises long before the explosive device was triggered. The detonation left the once tranquil estate in ruins, serving as a stark reminder of the relentless pursuit of Escobar by those determined to bring him to justice. Pablo Escobar's next significant property acquisition was a discreet and secluded hideaway nestled in the resort town of Tulum, Mexico. This hidden gem served as the perfect sanctuary for the notorious drug lord, shielding him from prying eyes and potential threats. Surrounded by lush tropical foliage, the property provided a tranquil and idyllic setting, making it ideal for someone seeking to evade the pursuit of justice. The high-end hideout was equipped with bulletproof walls, ensuring maximum security for the elusive cartel leader. However, 
Following Escobar's demise, this paradise property fell into a state of neglect, remaining virtually abandoned until 2012. It was during this time that New York art dealer Leo Malka discovered its potential. Recognizing the property's unique qualities, the avid art collector seized the opportunity and acquired the estate, envisioning a grand transformation. Determined to restore the property to its former glory, Leo Malka embarked on a spectacular renovation project, sparing no expense to create a lavish and exclusive five-star art hotel. This transformation breathed new life into the once-forgotten property, elevating it into a luxurious haven that seamlessly combined art, culture, and unparalleled hospitality. In 2015, the Casa Malka, boasting 71 rooms, opened its doors to guests and swiftly gained acclaim as one of Mexico's most luxurious and exclusive hotels. The resort prides itself on offering exceptional privacy to its guests, solidifying its reputation as a sought-after destination for those in search of a truly secluded and opulent escape. Today, Casa Malca stands as a testament to the property's intriguing history, now transformed into a luxurious retreat where guests can indulge in the finest accommodations and amenities while reveling in the unparalleled beauty of Tulum's natural surroundings. Undoubtedly, it's a remarkable journey from its notorious past to its current opulent stature. The hotel's most captivating feature is its secret underground swimming pool, ingeniously concealed beneath the main outdoor pool. This hidden oasis adds an air of mystery to the property, enticing visitors into its enigmatic depths. The intriguing allure of the underground pool is further amplified by the rumors surrounding its history. It's said that Pablo Escobar might have used this covert space to stash substantial amounts of illicit drug money, hidden away from the prying eyes of authorities. The exact contents of this secretive underground chamber remain shrouded in mystery, leaving one to ponder what other treasures or secrets may lie beneath the surface. In times of trouble, Pablo Escobar possessed multiple secure buildings and mansions where he could seek refuge. Pablo Escobar's Monaco Tower, also known as Edificio Monaco, was an eight-story building situated in the upscale neighborhood of El Poblado in Medellin, Colombia. El Poblado was renowned for its wealth and exclusive establishments, making the tower a fitting addition to the luxurious living spaces in the area. The Monaco Tower enjoyed panoramic views of the city and the surrounding mountains, making it an appealing location for those seeking upscale living. While the exterior of the Monaco Tower did not boast extravagant architectural features, the building's sleek and contemporary design harmonized seamlessly with its upscale surroundings. This modern and stylish structure stood tall amidst the Medellin skyline, making its mark in the late 1980s. Pablo Escobar and his family took up residence in a luxurious penthouse, one of the 12 apartments within the building. This lavish abode offered abundant living space and boasted impressive amenities, including two swimming pools and a tennis court. However, beneath the veneer of opulence, the penthouse concealed secrets crucial for Escobar's safety and criminal operations. The building featured a discreet panic room, providing a hidden sanctuary where Escobar and his family could seek refuge during emergencies. Additionally, an ingeniously concealed vault was designed to store drugs, weapons, and substantial sums of cash, further facilitating his illegal empire. In the depths of the basement, a spacious garage provided secure shelter for Escobar's prized collection of vintage cars and motorcycles, reflecting the drug lord's extravagant taste even in his choice of transportation. The tranquility of the penthouse was shattered on January 13, 1988, when a bomb planted by the rival Cali cartel exploded, causing significant damage to the building. The Cali cartel had targeted Escobar and his family in a desperate attempt to eliminate their fierce competitor. Although Escobar and his family miraculously survived the attack, three people lost their lives and ten others sustained injuries. Escobar's daughter, Manuela, suffered hearing loss due to the explosion. This brutal assault marked a pivotal moment in the escalating conflict between the rival cartels, sparking a bloody and protracted war that would rage from 1988 until Escobar's eventual demise in 1993. 
The penthouse, once a symbol of opulence and power, transformed into a haunting reminder of the violent and tumultuous era of the Colombian drug trade after Pablo Escobar's death in 1993. The Monaco Tower fell into a state of disrepair, becoming a grim symbol of Pablo Escobar's violent reign. In 2019, the Colombian government made the decision to demolish the building as part of a broader project to transform the site into a park dedicated to honoring the victims of the drug trade and promoting reconciliation. Once a symbol of opulence and power, the Monaco Tower now stands as a significant part of Colombia's history, serving as a poignant reminder of the turbulent and violent era of the drug cartel wars in the country. Its demolition marked the end of an era and a step toward healing and rebuilding for Medellin and its people. El Chapo, whose real name is Joaquin Archibaldo Guzman Loera, is among the most infamous and elusive drug lords in modern history. Born on April 4, 1957, in Sinaloa, Mexico, El Chapo rose from humble beginnings to become the leader of the Sinaloa cartel, one of the most powerful and notorious drug trafficking organizations globally. With his cunning and ruthlessness, he became a central figure in the global drug trade, orchestrating the smuggling of vast quantities of cocaine, heroin, and methamphetamine into the United States and other countries. Throughout his criminal career, El Chapo earned a reputation for his remarkable ability to evade capture and escape from high-security prisons. This reputation further solidified his status as a mythical figure in the criminal underworld, symbolizing the challenges faced by law enforcement agencies in their relentless efforts to dismantle drug cartels and bring their leaders to justice. El Chapo's life and exploits have served as the inspiration for countless books, movies, and documentaries, making him a subject of fascination and intrigue worldwide. The notorious drug lord amassed an astounding amount of wealth and lived a lavish lifestyle, owning several luxurious mansions equipped with multiple escape mechanisms and robust security measures. Let's explore the residences of this Mexican drug lord. Joaquin El Chapo Guzman had two notable residences in the state of Sinaloa. The first residence was located in Los Mocos, a city in northern Sinaloa, where Guzman spent his final days before being apprehended by Mexican Marines and subsequently extradited to the United States. The second home was situated in Culiacan, the capital of Sinaloa, and it functioned as a safe house equipped with intricate escape tunnels to ensure his security and facilitate evasion of capture. Despite leading a vast drug trafficking operation estimated to be worth $12.6 billion, El Chapo's residences were surprisingly modest. These houses lacked the opulence one might expect from a global drug kingpin, appearing relatively simple and unassuming. Nevertheless, these properties played critical roles in his operations, serving as both bases of operation and means of evading authorities until his eventual capture and extradition. The first residence previously owned by Joaquin El Chapo Guzman remains abandoned, while the second residence in Culiacan found a new owner through the Mexican National Lottery. However, the fortunate winner chose to remain anonymous, fearing potential repercussions from the cartel. The Los Mocos home is a two-story house with three bedrooms, with the living area situated on the second floor. The property also includes a spacious room with a walk-in closet featuring glass walls. Upon authorities entering the home, they discovered beds inside all the bedrooms, with the room on the first floor suspected to have served a particular purpose. El Chapo's own bedroom was strategically located due to its proximity to the walk-in closet that harbored a secret entrance. These two homes have taken divergent paths, one dormant and the other now belonging to a fortunate lottery winner but shrouded in secrecy for safety concerns. Despite the Mexican government's efforts, they struggled to find a buyer for the most expensive property acquired by El Chapo, which was originally purchased for Griselda Lopez, the mother of his son, Ovidio Guzman Lopez. This extravagant three-story house is estimated to be worth $587,000 and boasts several bedrooms, along with an inviting outdoor backyard pool. Despite its luxurious features and prime location, the property remained unsold, likely due to its association with the infamous drug lord and the ongoing legal complexities surrounding his family. If you thought that one of the biggest cartel leaders would have only two modest-looking homes, 
What you're about to hear will astound you. According to testimony from a prosecution witness at Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's trial in New York, the former drug lord was extraordinarily wealthy and owned properties at numerous beaches and ranches in every state. The witness, Miguel Angel Martinez, a former pilot for the Sinaloa cartel and a close associate of Guzman, testified that Chapo's opulent lifestyle was funded by a cocaine boom in the early 1990s. Guzman's wealth afforded him extravagant indulgences, including a private zoo with big cats, a trip to Switzerland for an anti-aging treatment, gambling in Macau, private jets and lavish gifts, among other luxuries. The court heard that Guzman maintained a lifestyle of opulence, often accompanied by four to five women. The testimony provided a glimpse into El Chapo's excesses and indulgences, painting a vivid picture of the immense wealth he amassed during his reign as a powerful drug lord. According to Miguel Angel Martinez's testimony, one of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman's extravagant properties was a lavish mansion worth $10 million located in the Pacific Coast resort city of Acapulco. This opulent residence boasted various amenities, including swimming pools and a tennis court. What set it apart was the private zoo, complete with a small train that allowed Guzman and his guests to tour the premises and observe lions, tigers, and panthers. In addition to the luxurious mansion, Guzman also owned a yacht named Chapito, which was docked nearby, further symbolizing his immense wealth and extravagant lifestyle. These details offered a glimpse into the excessive and extravagant world of El Chapo, showcasing the vast resources at his disposal during his tenure as a powerful drug lord. However, it wasn't just El Chapo who enjoyed a lavish lifestyle. His son, Ovidio Guzman, also experienced a life of luxury until his house was raided and he was captured by the Mexican military. Ovidio Guzman Lopez is one of the four children born to El Chapo and his second wife, Griselda Guadalupe Lopez. Ovidio was born in 1990 in the town of Badiraguato, a place with historical significance in the context of the drug trade in Mexico. During his school days, Ovidio Guzman Lopez acquired two nicknames, El Raton and El Nuevo Raton, meaning the new mouse. These monikers were given to him by his peers in 2008. Following the tragic event, Ovidio's older brother, Edgar Guzman Lopez, was fatally shot. In the aftermath, both Ovidio and his brother Joaquin Guzman Lopez inherited a share in their father's vast and notorious global narco-trafficking empire. As confirmed by the U.S. State Department, this inheritance further entangled Ovidio in the family's drug-related activities, perpetuating their controversial legacy in the world of organized crime. After the military raid in January 2023, the scene was one of utter chaos and destruction. The once elegant living room, adorned with high-end minimalist furniture crafted from luxurious mahogany and marble, now lay in disarray. Two elegant white cowhide couches were upturned and marred with dark stains of blood. The striking panoramic window that had once offered breathtaking views of the lush Sinaloan mountains had been reduced to a jagged hole in the wall, surrounded by shattered glass. The youngest Guzman's extravagant residence is situated on a hill in the small town of Jesus Maria, approximately 40 minutes away from Culiacan, the capital city of Sinaloa. Culiacan holds significant historical importance as the birthplace of the notorious Sinaloa cartel, which shares its name with the region. Guzman's opulent home is perched in this serene location, surrounded by the natural beauty of the Sinaloan landscape. Similar to his infamous father, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, Ovidio also had an escape tunnel concealed within his luxurious residence. This secret tunnel extended from the inner parking lot in the backyard to the exterior of the compound, ingeniously camouflaged to blend seamlessly with the cement floor, providing a discreet means of departure in times of danger. El Chapo and his wife possessed two armored vehicles, an elegant white GLE Mercedes-Benz and a sleek black G-Wagon, providing them with added security and protection during their travels. Inside the lavish mansion, the four main rooms boasted impressive features. One of the rooms featured a large circular bathtub, offering a luxurious and relaxing experience. Another room contained a walk-in closet that was impressively spacious, rivaling the size of a regular bedroom. 
The kitchen was equipped with state-of-the-art appliances embodying modern convenience and elegance. Outside, a sprawling backyard welcomed visitors with a life-size nativity scene set peacefully under the shelter of palm-lined roofs. This picturesque scene added a touch of serenity to the opulent residence, where luxury and discretion went hand in hand. El Chapo and his family had several other homes and escape routes, many of which may still remain undiscovered. While the former drug lord is imprisoned for life, many of his family members and close allies continue to live secret lives of luxury, all the while fearing the day when they too might be captured and put behind bars. El Mencho, whose real name is Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes, is one of the most notorious and elusive drug lords in modern history. Born in 1966 in the state of Michoacán, Mexico, El Mencho rose to power as the leader of the Jalisco New Generation Cartel, abbreviated as CJNG, a ruthless and powerful criminal organization involved in drug trafficking, arms smuggling, and other illicit activities. Known for his brutal tactics and ability to evade capture, El Mencho has become a key figure in Mexico's ongoing drug war and has been declared one of the most wanted criminals by both Mexican and United States authorities. With a vast network spanning various countries, including the United States, El Mencho and his cartel have been responsible for a significant share of drug-related violence and corruption in the region. His elusive nature and the wide-reaching impact of his criminal empire have made him a central figure in the ever-evolving landscape of organized crime in Mexico and beyond. The man is said to possess unimaginable amounts of money and is known to splurge on luxurious mansions that feature unique safety and escape features to elude authorities. Given his constant state of being on the run, authorities have struggled to uncover his various hideouts and homes. Let's explore what is known about his residences from the past. El Mencho may have initially enjoyed a more relaxed lifestyle, indulging in his unlawfully acquired wealth and occasionally venturing into urban areas. However, as he ascended to become one of the most wanted drug kingpins by both the Mexican and United States governments, his circumstances underwent a dramatic shift. Now, he must continually seek refuge in various hidden locations to evade capture, as authorities intensify their relentless pursuit. In their quest to capture El Mencho, authorities have managed to uncover a few properties that served as temporary hideouts for the leader of the notorious Jalisco New Generation Cartel, famously known as CJNG. These concealed places play a pivotal role in enabling him to evade arrest and continue orchestrating the cartel's illicit activities. The rural ranches where El Mencho was purportedly hiding proved to be suitable hideouts, offering a comfortable retreat for Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes and his criminal associates. One of the most significant properties seized by the authorities was Rancho La Esperanza in Tonala, which belonged to José Luis Gutiérrez Valencia, also known as Don Cello. Don Cello happens to be the father-in-law of El Mencho. This ranch served as a base for housing several exotic animals, including a Bengal tiger, a Harris hawk, a yellow-breasted toucan, two other members of the hawk family known as crested caracaras, and three green macaws. During the search of the cartel leader's ranch, authorities also discovered six 9mm pistols, two of which were gold-plated. One of the pistols featured an image of San Judas Tadeo, while another was adorned with precious stones and bore the logo of a skull and a Ferrari, adding a sense of opulence to the weaponry. These findings exemplify the luxurious and well-equipped lifestyle that El Mencho had access to, even as he remained on the run from law enforcement. The secluded ranches where El Mencho and his criminal associates sought refuge showcased the luxurious lifestyle they enjoyed while remaining hidden. This further underscores the complexity of dismantling his criminal enterprise. It's evident that even while on the run, the fugitive drug lord preferred to live comfortably in the lap of luxury. However, it's not just his hideouts and homes. El Mencho also sought special treatment for his medical issues. Mexican authorities have uncovered a hospital in the community of La Juaro, located in the state of Jalisco, allegedly constructed by Nemesio Oseguera Cervantes. The hospital is nestled in a wooded area amid a cluster of houses and dirt roads. 
This medical facility was specifically built to cater to El Mencho, who is believed to suffer from kidney disease. It allows him to receive necessary medical treatment while minimizing the risk of capture by law enforcement. This secluded and well-equipped medical facility provides a safe haven for the cartel boss to address his health concerns away from prying eyes and potential threats. Situated approximately 50 kilometers away from Villa Purification, a significant stronghold of the CJ Engi, the clinic strategically positions itself to serve the cartel leader and his associates while remaining accessible to the local community. This approach aims to win the trust and support of the residents. El Mencho has reportedly provided economic assistance and essential supplies and collaborated on various community development projects in the area. This discovery highlights the extensive reach and influence of the CJ Eng and its leader, who goes to great lengths to secure loyalty from both his inner circle and the local population. The well-equipped and concealed health center not only serves as a sanctuary for El Mencho's medical needs, but also acts as a means to solidify the cartel's grip on the region. This discovery sheds light on the extensive measures criminal organizations like the CJ Eng take to safeguard their leaders and maintain their operations. El Mencho is often referred to as the most intelligent cartel leader by some top narco cops, and there are concerns that he may never be apprehended. We certainly hope that won't be the case. Until then, this dangerous cartel leader will continue to enjoy a life of luxury in opulent hideouts and mansions financed by drug money. However, all this luxury stands in stark contrast to the fact that El Mencho holds the dubious distinction of being the most wanted individual in Mexico and one of the most sought-after figures in the United States. In a relentless pursuit to bring him to justice, both the Mexican and U.S. governments have placed substantial bounties on his head. They are offering up to $30 million in Mexican currency and $10 million in U.S. dollars, respectively, for any valuable information leading to his arrest. The charges against El Mencho are grave, as he is wanted for his involvement in drug trafficking, playing a key role in organized crime activities, and possessing firearms without proper documentation. His criminal operations with the Jalisco New Generation Cartel have caused widespread violence and corruption, making him a top priority target for law enforcement agencies on both sides of the border. The significant rewards offered for his capture underscore the critical nature of his role in the global drug trade and the unwavering determination to dismantle his criminal empire. It's truly shocking to see that some individuals are willing to trade their peace of mind for a life built on the addictions of others. If you want to learn more, click on one of the cards on your screen to watch additional content.